Some of my earliest childhood memories are out on the Badlands looking for fossils. It's like fishing, there's always a bit of luck involved and I just happen to be very lucky at what I do. Triceratops tooth. And now I have groups of volunteers that join me every year to do all different aspects of paleontology. This is Dino Camp. We are in the Valley of the Last Dinosaurs. I call this area the, the Valley of the Last Dinosaurs because it has some of the very last dinosaurs that roamed North America right before they went extinct uh, 66 million years ago. Just yesterday, we made a really spectacular find. But this is not for everybody. It's a dinosaur dig. We're in the dirt digging for dinosaurs. So here we are in wonderful Marmoth, North Dakota, the heartland of the Hell Creek Formation. So this has been our backyard now, right, for the last couple of days. We've been exploring these hills. This is a wonderful playground. This is where I grew up. So this was my backyard for many, many years. I'm very much a, a product of my environment. I mean, here I am right in the middle of the Badlands, right in the middle of dinosaur country. Pretty much everybody in this area goes into the oil industry. My dad was in the oil industry, both my brothers in the oil industry. But ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to go out and hunt dinosaurs. I was like a lot of kids around here, just like to play sports, outdoors. A lot of my friends, they'd go hunting. I'd go hunting, but for animals that have been dead for 67 million years. I found my very first fossil when I was really small, brought it home and uh, kept it underneath my bed. Every year, the bone diggers would descend upon the town and they would be out here trying to collect more data to try to answer whatever questions they were interested in. So I would take my little shoebox full of fossils to the bunkhouse and show the bone diggers what I had found. And now I am one of the bone diggers, you know. <laughs> All I did for eight weeks last year was hike all of this. And that's why I found this, the Valley of the Last Dinosaurs, because I was hiking up here, mapping in the contact, looking down, being like, wow, look at all those dinosaurs. When I'm out looking, I look for shapes and I look for colors. Uh, I'll look for lichen growing on bones. So lichen here will be nice and dark orange or green. So that's usually a telltale sign that there's a dinosaur nearby. But right now, we are in the Hell Creek Formation. And the Hell Creek Formation represents the very last moment in time when dinosaurs were alive, 66 million years ago. And if you want to understand why dinosaurs went extinct, you come to this particular area to figure that out. So here's uh, some steinkerns. Oh, yeah. That's a clam. That's a snail. Oh, nice. It's a turtle. This is that new turtle that I'm, that I'm currently naming. I just got done writing a paper on this turtle. It's a good digging day. We have people from all walks of life that come and dig. The youngest participant I had was about 10 years old, all the way up to a lady who's in her mid 80s. This week we had a lawyer from Columbus, Ohio, a father and son from California, a mother and daughter from Vermont, and we have several students. Me and my team can quite quickly train really anybody. No previous experience is required. Well, that's a piece of turtle. I'd put that in the bag. That's a triceratops tooth? That is a triceratops tooth. Whenever you're digging in a river system like this, you just never know what you're going to find. The biggest bone that we found yesterday is this bone right here. Does anybody know what that is? I want them to be able to go out and learn how to prospect and find a fossil and figure out what is bone, what is rock. I want them to be able to figure out how to excavate a dinosaur and to map out a skeleton and then how to collect that skeleton. And I also want them to have the opportunity to at least learn how to do lab work, if they're interested. This is what's assembled so far, and this is what we have to put together still. <laughs> What makes this area right here in North Dakota very, very special is this is the area that preserves the KT boundary. 
So this is that moment in time when dinosaurs go extinct. So everything below here, this is all Cretaceous. This is the age of the dinosaurs. Everything above is age of the mammals. No more dinosaurs. The KT boundary is that moment in time when dinosaurs go extinct. And we can actually see it in this particular area. It's this thin, light colored layer. And that particular layer has an incredible amount of iridium. And iridium is rare on Earth, but common in meteorites. So that indicates that this layer was put down as a result of a meteorite impact. My question is, what killed the dinosaurs? Did they go extinct gradually? Did they go extinct catastrophically? And here in the Hell Creek Formation, this is the place to address that question. A meteorite strikes off the Yucatan Peninsula 66 million years ago, and then it lights out for the dinosaurs. We've had a ton of exciting finds this year. Just yesterday, I found a six and a half foot long Triceratops skull. And of course, Triceratops means three horns. So right here, we have the two horns that are situated right above the eyes. So right here, called brow horns. The horn had fallen off, and so I had to relocate these two pieces. But you can see it's the whole horn. This one fits back together quite nicely right here. And then if you come up over here, you can see just the very tip of the nasal horn. So that's the one right on the nose. And then down here, we have the big parrot-like beak. And then back here, we have the very edge of the shield of the Triceratops, the big frilly part in the back. So this big shield is going into the hill here. This is the most complete Triceratops skull that I've ever found. It's also one of the biggest. So to find them completely intact like this is just awesome. How do you uh, really feel about it? Yeah. Oh man, I am, I am completely <laughs> stoked about this find. <laughs> Triceratops is the most common dinosaur in this area uh, during this time period. They're literally everywhere, so they are the cows of the Cretaceous. I found this skull last year. We dug down to it and uh, dug around it and then put this nice protective jacket on top of it. And now we're getting ready to haul it out of here. We have to put these jackets on them to help preserve the fossils because they're very fragile. They'll break up very, very easily. We just take burlap and mix it in plaster and then cover the whole bone in this protective casing. What we hope to do is we're going to lift the skull up and then we'll slide a sled underneath of it and then we'll connect a cable to the sled and then we'll use the winch to just very gently slide the whole skull down this slope. Here we have a whole herd of Triceratops on a flatbed trailer, pulling them through the Badlands. None of these things have moved in 67 million years, and now they're all back in the herd, you know, getting the band back together, and they're moving across the landscape. The important thing is it goes into a museum where people can enjoy it forever. The Smithsonian Institution, they recently shut down their dinosaur hall. They're redoing the whole thing, they're revamping it, and it's gonna open in 2019. And in its place, they've put up a temporary exhibit. And that whole exhibit is on the Hell Creek Formation, on the rocks that we were just out on. One of the centerpieces of that exhibit is a Triceratops skeleton. But what the exhibit is about is the whole ecosystem. So it has the Triceratops skeleton, it has turtles, it has uh, alligators and fish and plants. So it's trying to build up this whole ecosystem and then also talk about what killed the dinosaurs.
seeing a fossil for the first time, a fossil that has, has never been discovered, um, that nobody has ever seen, you are the first person to see that fossil. That's a truly magical experience. I think most good scientists are obsessed with the question that they're trying to answer. I'm certainly thinking about the questions that I'm trying to address most of the time. So I guess you could call that an obsession. When I get on the trail of a fossil, I just will not rest. I don't care how hot it is or what time of the day it is. I have to be out there until I uh, get the job done. Find the fossil, bring it home. How many more do you need to find before you can say you're done. All of them. I need to find all of them. 